Okay. Um, I'll, your, your seat is there. Um, so I will uh, introduce the panel. So this is an IPv6 panel on IPv6 success stories. Um, it will be moderated by Lucian Constantine, who is from uh, IDG News Media. Um, he's kindly agreed to, to, uh, to do this for us, and we thank him for that. Um, I'll ask the panelists, actually, or well, Lucian, maybe you want to ask the panelists to introduce themselves, because we've had a couple of changes um, since, uh, as announced on the uh, program. Um, but with that, I, I hand should, over to you. Should I introduce them myself? Or? If, if you can, yeah, yeah, thank you. So, hi everyone, uh, my name is Lucian Constantin. I'm a news correspondent with the IDG News Service. It's a news wire for technology publications such as Network World, Computer World, PC World. Um, so, we are here for the IPv6 deployment panel. Uh, in order, I know it's kind of late in the day, so to make it more interesting, I'm going to allow questions as we go along from the audience. So if you have any, any question or comment to make to one of the answers, please raise your hand and we'll try to get a mic to you. I won't be able to take too many questions, though, because we are short on time. Uh, I'd like to introduce the pa panel. I'll uh, start over there. You know, Alvaro Vives. Uh, he's a trainer with RIPE uh, NCC, NCC, sorry. Uh, we have uh, Adrian Minta, Minta, Adrian Minta, sorry. Adrian Minta, he's a senior system engineer with the Romanian Special Te Telecommunication Service, uh, which, uh, among other things, acts as an ISP for public institutions in Romania and handles the governmental infrastructure. Uh, we have Jan George, uh, he is operational engagement program manager for the Internet Society. And we have Claudio Foliano, who's uh, chief technology officer for Tenet, uh, Tenet Telecom, which is a local ISP. Uh, thank you all for, for agreeing to take part in this panel. Uh, to go ahead, we've had an earlier talk, controversial talk, <laughs> um, with arguments on why IPv6 is allegedly a failure in some sense. Uh, one of the arguments brought up was the, that IPv6 has poorer performance than IPv4. Uh, and is that a legitimate argument? Uh, should people be concerned about this? And maybe Alvaro can share some, some info on that. Does it work? Where's the button? Tell you what, I'll give you the oh, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah, the measurements uh, out there shows that um, yes, uh, the same as uh, we have seen in the presentation, there are differences between countries and uh, different uh, around the world. And uh, uh, what do we can see now is that uh, IPv6 in many places is doing worse than IPv4, but in some places doing better than an IPv4. So, uh, and they are improving. So it's something that. Uh, um, we still need some, I mean, to improve that, but you can't be, uh, you don't have to be concerned about that. It's not, it's not uh, something that should refrain you from implementing IPv6. It's not even, we are talking about milliseconds of difference. So it's something that the user experience won't suffer too much. It, maybe if you are in a couple of countries where you see 200 milliseconds of delay, but it's something that not even human uh, uh, can realize about that. And we also have a mechanism like uh, happy eyeballs that make it uh, flexible, preferring IPv4 and IPv6. So the end user experience uh, in many cases is, is not bad. So um, I won't say this is something that uh, is a problem right now. Okay, thank you. Um, Jan wants to, to, to add something. Yeah, so uh, I have this one. I, I, I got used to it in the morning session. So. There, is, there was the measurement from Facebook, um, and to their surprise, they started measuring uh, between 15 and 30 percent uh, better user experience over IPv6. Um, they still have no exact explanation why this is happening, but this is what, what they measure. So uh, at the last uh, IPv6 summit in Slovenia, we then invited um, um, a lady from, from LinkedIn because they did the same experiment, and they are they are measuring between 20 and 40 percent better experience over IPv6 than on IPv4. 
and they also don't have uh, because when when I I took them for for the for the tour of Slovenia I I was in the same car and I I had long discussion with her why why this is happening she said we don't know nobody knows but it's constantly between 20 and 40 percent better experience and here is so but my my take is that we we don't have to to compare these two things before we equalize the policy our peering policy so if you're an operator please take into consideration if you deploy ipv6 and if you start doing peering over ipv6 and you and you implement it for your users equalize the peer and the ipv4 and ipv6 peering policy so if you're peering with somebody on ipv4 peer also on ipv6 and when we have the same peering policy everywhere then we can start comparing how how the, the protocols behave right does anyone have a question yeah sure um, i can provide a short answer for the for the difference in speed for the from the problem you uh, you talked about there's actually a, a, a better speed on IPv6 due to the fact that the upstream providers offers more bandwidth in order to support implementation of uh, IPv6. For example, someone like uh, Hurricane Electric can actually provide you something like 40% of the, the routes in the world for IPv6 and doesn't charge anything for it. So that's why the bandwidth is uh, it's, uh, higher. And free IPv6 transit, yeah. So that's why the the bandwidth is uh, higher. No, same, same service. So they use this exactly same service, is just the difference of the protocol. Okay, but you you've been at all the right presentations and all the measurements show technically that IPv6 is performing worse than IPv4, so it doesn't have a logical explanation. Well, we are not talking about the protocol itself because Jeff Houston and, and, and his people were just using pings, right, to, to measure stuff. Not only pings, also the yeah. add, they add service which is measuring actual connections. So he had a presentation in which it, he showed that the TCP there. connections are Worse in IPv6. Actually, so, introduced yeah, you know it, yeah. Jeff, to, okay. to the stage. I'll so you remember it. Then you know that he showed clearly from yes. his measurements that uh, TCP connections have a larger drop rate than uh, on, over IPv6. So there is no technical reasons for IPv6 delivery to work better than IPv4. But this is so the measurement the only of the real content. The the content that people is actually seeing. People, yeah. uh, regular okay, maybe, people don't use pings and trace yeah. routes for the internet. Yeah. They, use, they use TCP connections. But maybe if, uh, as uh, Claudio was saying, if there is a different bandwidth used, then it's uh, just a temporary impression. You having a better experience is just something temporary. When the traffic will be the same, it uh, shouldn't be the same. Didn't you say that you sold all the IPv4 addresses that you could, right? <laughs> yeah, from Romania. Yeah. What's in it for you? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Just to clarify what, what Jan said about uh, user experience, are you talking about latency or uh, some different metric of user experience? It is, they, they, they basically did the test of, of uh, uh, how the content loads, what are the times, actually the user experience, they were measuring the user experience, the whole thing. T time to interaction or something yeah, like that. Yeah, basically. Okay, so I guess the, the conclusion to this question is if you want, you can deploy it and test it yourself. <laughs> yeah. uh, moving on, uh, another uh, issue raised was that uh, was the cost of replacing existing CPEs, that's customer premises equipment, uh, and possibly other infrastructure changes being more costly than actually buying IPv4 addresses. Um, myself being a, a reporter focused on, on the security industry, I know that a few years ago there were concerns in the security industry about security devices like firewalls, IPS, IDS, not playing well with IPv6 
uh, and since uh, Jan has a lot of experience uh, assisting and advising ISPs on IPv6 deployment, I'd like him to address this, these concerns. <laughs> oh, firewalls, okay, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about something else. All right, uh, so um, years ago, um, if we talk about the equipment, the, the speed bump to deploy IPv6 was the, the equipment, the implementation in, in, in network equipment. So um, actually what happened was, to make the long story short, I was, I was asking the people from our government we met over beer somewhere, and I asked them, why are you not requiring IPv6 when you're buying equipment in your tenders? And they said, because we don't know how to. We don't know how to put the specification in. We would, but can you please write us a small text that we will put in? And I said, okay, challenge accepted. We, we drank another few beers and I went home, right? So then I started writing this stuff and thinking about it, and uh, actually it came out, uh, Sander Stefan joined and Mary Kakia at the end, and now we have the RIPE 554. I don't know how many, how many of you have ever heard about the RIPE 554 document? Okay, the usual suspects. This is, this is the IPv6 requirements for ICT equipment uh, that is um, uh, divided into four different parts for, for no, now it's six di different parts for several different equipment. And there is a mandatory requirement where the RFCs and the, the, the specifications are that this equipment must support. And there is the optional part where if, if, if some people that, that sends in an offer for the equipment for the tender can have more points when the, the tender is evaluated. Um, and this actually became the norm around the world for, for the IPv6 um, uh, requirements in, 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 at the vendors. Basically, Cisco told me that this, our document was the basis for their, for their roadmap for IPv6 in Cisco. So um, it is translated in 17 languages now, or 18, I hear. Uh, maybe you should translate it in, in Romanian also and, and let people use it because it's, it's just a, a template. And actually, this document pushed vendors into deploying more and more, not just mandatory IPv6 um, uh, uh, RFCs and requirements, but also optional ones because this is how they win tenders then. This is how, how, how they get money. So there is an incentive to implement this stuff. So we have seen in last two years, um, we have seen a big uptake in, in uh, compliance and IPv6 um, um, uh, capabilities in, in hardware. So if you are buying hardware today, make sure you use RIPE uh, 554 and uh, require IPv6 because if you're buying today the equipment that doesn't support IPv6, there's something wrong with you. I have a question. Uh, do you have any influence uh, in Brussels? Uh, because I seen a lot of uh, public projects financed by the Brussels, and they didn't specify anything about IPv6. Who? Brussels. 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 No. The European yes. Union. The European Commission. Commission. We can try. We can always try. Right. If there's, you want to no push IPv6, uh, at least you could. Change the policy for new so, projects for, for um, financing. When, when we finished the RIPE 554, there came the, the German government and they did their, their own specification uh, based on RIPE 554, but it's a little bit more detailed. And both these documents went into as an input for um, European IPv6 uh, uh, profile that will be, I think, soon pushed to all uh, European member states and will be required if you're buying equipment, you need to, you need to use this. Uh, not only for equipment, for all the whole project. Okay, yeah, maybe. Well, uh, right now I don't see any project that uh, asks us for IPv6 yeah. space. It's, it's okay. a pity. We need to raise some awareness in there also. And they are um, multi-million pro projects yeah, yeah. and with public sites and... Uh, yeah. uh, well, in, in, in Slovenia we had several projects that, uh, for example, they were um, uh, giving out some money for, for, for some mobile applications and things like, like this. And the first and 
hard requirement was it must work on IPv6 only network. Period. Full from stop. From the go uh, Polish government? No, from Slovenian government. For Slovenia, okay. Yeah. Just a few comments. Um, if you manage to hum somehow get the document side by China, uh, maybe we will deploy IPv6 faster. Something like 90% of the hardware coming out of China, it's IPv6, without IPv6. So that's the main issue. The difference between uh, an, equipment, uh, an equipment for a client with IPv6 and uh, IPv4, it's something like 40 euros. Just for the software. I mean, the, the device is quite capable of doing that, but you can't manage to modify the software in order to use IPv6. So that's the main issue why IPv6 doesn't uh, get implemented faster almost everywhere. Yeah. It's good that the European companies are, are addressing the issue and using your document as a reference in order to implement like Cisco. But I, I can also tell you that Cisco has routers, old routers like Cisco 4948, the 10 gigabit uh, model that doesn't do IPv6 hardware. Mm -hmm. It does it software. Yep. And you have to continually update your equipment in order to support IPv6. Can I cl clarify something? So I think Jan was, was uh, meaning that you are the buyer. So yeah. you, can, you can put you this as a requirement. Do you want to sell me stuff, gear, equipment? Yeah, but you have to support it. Unless, unless I'll buy from somewhere else. I know there's, a pr pressure there's probably a price consideration here, like a business impact. You know, Chinese business equipment is probably That's cheaper. Why you, you mentioned China. Actually, we, we, we are very near. I, I, uh, the other day I got an email from Taiwan uh, government saying that they're using CRIP 554 for, for their specifications. So we are, we, we are getting there. Good. Great. <laughs> um, if there are no questions from the audience or comments, I'll, I'll go into the next. This brings us to the next, into the next question. And actually, it, 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 it would be good to hear from ISPs from the people who actually implemented IPv6 who are, uh, are in the process of doing so and hear what were some of the, more, the most major challenges they've encountered and, or what benefits they've seen uh, after they deployed IPv6. And uh, I'd like to, to start with the STS. Um, we started uh, deploying uh, IPv6 in to, around 2012. Uh, just uh, after the main uh, ISP in Romania deployed for uh, the, his customer IPv6 band, because we are uh, providing information to the public, we decided to uh, to open IPv6 also to uh, to, the, to our servers and to our networks. Unfortunately, our customers, which are uh, public institution. Uh, didn't adopt uh, until now IPv6 in their networks. We, they keep coming for IPv4 to us. We are uh, uh, LIR. But uh, we, from our standpoint of view, we see two main uh, speed bumps or uh, two main uh, obstacles. Uh, the first obstacle is the subjective one which uh, is uh, linked to the level of knowledge, expertise, expertise knowledge, and they, this is the harder one. And the uh, second, on their, part or on their part. And uh, the second uh, problem is uh, the uh, problems with hard, oh, hardware, oh, network hardware, and uh, this is the ob objective one. Uh, we have seen uh, equipment crashes from all the vendors, almost all vendors we had to have, and uh, we have seen uh, equipment crashes, firewalls, routers, a big, uh, unfortunately, uh, right now, waiting uh, and uh, we, uh, waiting and not deploying uh, IPv6 is a better choice than uh, deploying IPv6 and encountering uh, all sorts of uh, nasty issues with uh, hardware vendors. So these are the two main uh, blocks on in uh, IPv6 deployment from from our standpoint of view. Well, on, on, if I can comment on the on the expertise part, maybe maybe the government can 
can consider something like they've did with Go IT Hub, where they've asked for volunteers to help help them create new new IT projects to digitize the the whole day, the government systems. Maybe they can ask for volunteers with network knowledge to help them deploy IPv6. Uh, unfortunately, right now, if you check uh, the Gov site, is not available over IPv6. Uh, from <laughs> From my standpoint of view, it's a work in progress. Uh, we have to convince the guys over there that um, they need IPv6. And uh, right now, we didn't uh, have many uh, success with doing that. So may <laughs> maybe they will after this uh, conference, or maybe after somebody from European Union will uh, require in their documents for public sites to be available over IPv6 and uh, public institution to uh, offer uh, their uh, information over IPv6 as well. So they, they need a stick. Yeah. And a carrot. <laughs> and a carrot, yeah, and a carrot. Uh. Yes, why should you implement IPv6? Let's talk about that. Um, well, I did it for a simple reason. I needed to see what were the problems. And uh, I added an IPv6 address. First of all, I have to submit the slash 48 I got from RIPE or something like that. I managed to do that with a subnet calculator. And they, I got something like 65,000 addresses to, to be added on my router. And I looked at it and said, oh my god, there's more than I have on IPv4. Should I waste them? And then I looked what uh, RIPE allocated to me. And it was something like 1,200 billion IP addresses. And then I added the addresses on the router and started to configure my servers. I encountered that uh, most of them already being on the same uh, private LAN they already got addresses. I found out about auto configuration. Everybody was having an IPv6 uh, IP address. Just by adding them on the interface, every router in the in the in the same volan got an IPv6 address. And now I had a new problem. I had no firewall. I had a firewall on IPv4, but no firewall on IPv6. And I was started to testing how can I disable services like SSH, like Telnet, like web over IPv6 so they can respond on, on, only to IPv4? After that, I settled that I must learn more about IP tables, about firewalling on um, Cisco in order to drop connections over IPv6. I managed to do all that. I did, um, I added uh, IPv6 addresses to every server, to my web page. I done reverse DNS, I've done everything in order to, to see the potential. I found out that uh, you can mail better with IPv6, that the, the speed is actually better, not like uh, everybody saying that uh, uh, the, latency, the latency is greater. I haven't seen that. Um, but you have to do that in order to, to, to be sure that when it's de uh, deployed fully, you will be a step ahead. Because I had a customer that requested an IPv6 and I allocated him, him addresses. And uh, they next uh, called to the support center and said, uh, my TV is actually, actually not working. And I said, how? And we have new dots lined appearing on the TV. And I said, okay, what's the problem? I'm not from the cable company or not from the, and I said, I, I connected it to the internet. One of the operators from us went to the customer, tested the signal, tested everything. We said, maybe there's power over the internet cable or something like that. No, actually the TV got an IPv6 address and was vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerable via IPv6. And the, the guys went into the TV and started changing settings and uh, stuff like that. So we disconnected the, the TV from the, from the, direct, directly from the network and put it into a router to get only IPv4. The next call from the same customer came that uh, my lights are going down. My uh, heat, uh, heat station is going up. Uh, my doors are unlocking. 
he connected the, the, the smart center from the home directly onto the network and got an IPv6. And the guy from the smart center said, look here, you forgot to put a password for IPv6. <laughs> so that's the main reason why you should implement IPv6, in order to find out the bugs, to solve them ahead of time, and to be ready for the, for the revolution. So nobody hacks you when you really need IPv6. It's quite, it's quite important to, to learn all these things in, in advance before deploying it in, in real life. Because I, uh, for, for, for example, the, the, the mobile network in, in um, um, the mobile network in, in my country, so we deployed in Slovenia, we have IPv6 on three, all three major um, uh, mobile operators and also our telecom is giving out the IPv6 by default. But when these people, mobile operator, when they enabled IPv6 and they enabled for every phone that, that can do IPv6, they, they go on IPv6 only. 60% of traffic switched to IPv6. Because Google, Twitter. Facebook is on IPv6. And they did not expect that. They were sort of like, okay, we will just test something. And they deployed IPv6 and it was sort of like a game for them. And all of a sudden, 60% of traffic switched to IPv6. It was like, whoa, hang on, we are not ready for this. Then they, I told them, they roll back. You, will have, you will have lots of traffic. If you switch to IPv6, you will have lots of traffic. So then they, they disabled it. They went back to the lab. They learned, they, they got the experience. And then they, when they were ready, they switched it on. So it's not, it's not some academic game anymore somewhere in the corner. It's, it's a real thing, right? You need to be ready for this. Uh, I have an explanation why uh, from some uh, people uh, the IPv6 uh, works better than IPv4 and for others don't. Uh, from, our, from my standpoint of view as a network operator, I see the following situation. You have a congested link with uh, somebody and the first thing you do when you have a congestion link is not to increase the link capacity, but to divert traffic to a longer path for uh, the, to solve the congestion. And uh, you do that for your, um, for your main traffic, and your main traffic is IPv4. So IPv6 will still go in, is still going to the shortest spot, but the IPv4 is taking the longer path and eventually uh, you will have uh, a better experience with IPv6 than with IPv4. Good. Yeah, but it depends on you. If you have the same policy for IPv6 as for IPv4, they will both change together. Okay. They talked okay. about it. So okay, they... nobody implements the same policy for IPv6 and you should. IPv4. Yes, because 80% uh, is IPv4 and, uh, and the IPv6 is insignificant. Uh, to the uh, whole traffic for most ISPs. So they will change the main uh, part of the traffic and this, this is still IPv4. So uh, the, they will change the IPv4 and uh, then IPv6 will, will be unchanged. You should have the same routing policy from one, from one reason. You, should, uh, you would uh, have unknown problems if you have different, you, 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 you need to check IPv6 for the problem, IPv4, yes. you have more problems. But if you have the same routing policy, once a problem arises, you should... Yes, uh, if you, uh, when uh, I have a peering connection with somebody, okay, and it's congested, so I have to f do something. So I have to divert a part of traffic to another path. Okay, for do, uh, to do that, I will, will check the uh, biggest cost, my biggest customers, and uh, and I add, add a BGP prepend to them. Okay, so uh, I, uh, I in this way I solve the problem of congestion because some of the customer we took the uh, will take the longest route, and some of them will not. And this is happening in, uh, even if I have IPv4 only. So I have customers which go to the shortest part, and I have customers we took the uh, we took uh, who will took the longest part. So uh, this all already happens for IPv4, and uh, IPv6 is not important. So nobody will try to change uh, for IPv6 
if uh, the IPv6 traffic is not significant to, to IPv4. What, what if not all of your peers are IPv6 ready? You do what you can. There's nothing you can do. Okay. A question for Claudio. I wanted to ask you, if, what do you think is better to learn from your own mistakes or from other people's mistakes as Both. a businessman? Yeah. Both. From your which, own mistake is faster it? because you learn as you, as you try. You from think? reading, it's kind of so, hard. You have to do experiments and see how it works and understand fully by doing something. I mean as a business... Uh, as a businessman, as a uh, person that runs a business, uh, if you are the one that is going to experience these new problems, new issues, then you will learn faster. This will you will learn faster, but you will have some costs. You can lose some customers. You can have some problems. Uh, that's issue. That's the issue regarding IPv6, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what you said earlier. Okay. You, you have to do that. You have problems. to do it on a level which permits you to. To understand, you have to be ready for the new technology. Yeah, if you don't get ready for the new technology, you will have some costs. Okay, I'll have to buy, I don't know, 1,000 equipment supporting IPv6. I have to assume that cost if I want to be ready in time. You can't do anything about it and just expect to, to somehow magically work. Nobody's going to come into your network and implement that. You have to take your time, read, learn, do something in order to be prepared. So, uh, running a network costs. Yeah. Uh, educating people how to troubleshoot the network and how to run the network costs. Um, expanding your network costs. Everything costs. So I don't see why, why this would be. Because, you know, IPv6 is not a business upgrade. It's just business as usual. It's a technology update. It's a technology refresh of your network. You just add new protocol. In old times, we had, you know how many protocols on the wire? IPX, uh, LAT, uh, DECnet, uh, IP, uh, Apple Talk, many of them. Now, I, it seems that people is afraid of T. So what's, what seems to be the problem? We, we need to learn all the time and, and go forward. Go, going backwards doesn't help much. You are right, but uh, what I meant is that the first, the pioneers will have the higher costs and uh, it's much easier to go to university, to go to college, to study, instead of learning by yourself. First, uh, so have you checked the calendar? It's 2016. First pioneers yeah, yeah. were done in 2008. Yeah, uh, On IPv6. IPv6. You need IPv6. to check the calendar. Yeah, IPv6 I, I, uh, has, as I was saying earlier, IPv6 has 18 years. It's 18 years old. But yeah. uh, its maturity is... It's good. So, no. okay. So you, you, are, you, are, you are trying to explain me that uh, the, uh, T-Mobile USA is a pioneer. Uh, has, has uh, 48 million devices on IPv6 only because the protocol is not mature and ready? Are you trying to say that? Are you trying to say that uh, I just got a note from the, the biggest Canadian operator, mobile operator, they're enabling all their, their customers on IPv6 um, in a week from now, are you trying to say that it's not ready? Are you trying to I, say I that uh, just the, the whole facts. Africa is implementing, while we speak here, Andrew Alston is implementing tens of millions of users in, in Kenya and Tanzania and South Africa. I just see the statistics, the facts, and you can but see Akamai, Google, and everybody. Real life. So, okay. Uh, there is a difference. So, in theory, the theory in practice is the same. In practice, there is a big difference between theory and practice. I, li I like this debate. I don't, I don't want to cut you off, but we have a couple of more questions to go through. And I'll, I'll say this I, about pioneers. The world needs heroes. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> let, me, uh, let me just a, a minute. Uh, okay, yes, we in Romania were the pioneers, even with IPv6. But the result is Romania is decreasing. As, uh, earlier, there was not included in the graphics, but Romania had something like 15-16% adoption rate of IPv6 four years ago, and now it's 3%, according to Akamai. Yeah, Ciprian, so but Romania has been a pioneer, has hit the walls, and now it's going down. 
Ciprian, is, that's really actually not, not the case. Some of the companies that uh, advertise IPv6 just remove the, 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 the advertisement. It doesn't seem, it doesn't, uh, I, I, I didn't see that, uh, for example, the providers remove IPv6 from clients. They didn't do that. Just some customers who advertise IPv6 actually <laughs> remove them from their big BGP. Oh, I understand. Give me give, okay. so give me a chance to. So he he was talking about the measurements from Google and Akamai, yeah. just to so the the feed has the sound. They will increase again. Okay, I okay. would like to tell the story. There is no statistic or such thing. Also has uh, is related with the policy. The same policy applied for IPv4 and IPv6. Don't know that. We were doing that, and during one change. We have uh, modified the policy for, for IPv4, but we didn't modify it for IPv6. And one IPv6 prefix didn't work for a couple of two, two weeks, let's say, until a customer suggested that his IPv6 is not working. The same thing happened two years after, and it took only one day for a customer to say that the IPv6 is not working. So I think the usage of IPv6 is He's growing. growing. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a good anecdote. Actually, actually, a problem is that uh, the community of RIPE permitted to, solve, uh, to, to sell IPv4. And some of the customers got IPv4 and renounced to IPv6. And that's about it. And, uh, but another, that's a small portion. Who, that's not, who did that that's in not Romania? Enough. And Nobody. another thing happened since 2012. A lot of small ISP were brought. And uh, the new owners imposed the policy and that policy didn't include IPv6. So that's... I don't think that's the case in Romania. The largest buyer of smaller ISPs is the one that has deployed the largest IPv6 uh, network. Yeah, and the second. This is not the reason. So there is absolutely not the reason of why IPv6 is decreasing in Romania. It's a different one. It doesn't matter why but they are decreased. They will rise up. The most important thing that is that the protocol is not broken. And it works. You just have to do it. And that's it. I'll, I'll let you guys continue this after the, the panel, <laughs> because we can be here all night. Uh, he, should be I, he should. Well, <laughs> benefits. Um, I, I want to say that some benefits go beyond just. We've heard an argument that IPv6 only brings a, a larger number of IPs, and uh, I've heard other people say that benefits go beyond that. And there actually might there might be possibilities or opportunities that are not obvious. Uh, and in our uh, discussions prior to this panel, sorry, uh, prior to, prior to this panel, you mentioned something about using uh, IPv6 to get rid of uh, the to get rid of ports. Can you can you expand on that? Yeah. So uh, you know. Uh, uh, IPv6 is not just just uh, uh, 96 more more bits, no magic. It is more addresses, but also there are other things. You have you have extension headers that you can do lots of stuff in it. Um, lots of things were fixed from from IPv4 from the protocol point of view were fixed because there were some architectural flaws uh, that were that were corrected in a new new version of of the, the protocol. So. There, there are some some improvements other than just the number of addresses. So, just for example, now what what uh, some people is thinking about, and I think Google is already working on it. So, can you imagine how cool how cool would it be if you could assign a slash sixty four, so that's that's a lot of addresses, to uh, each host. So, you have a host, you have you have a Linux machine or Windows machine or whatever you got. And you got the, all these huge number of, of addresses assigned just to this host. And then you start a DNS server, and you assign a unique IPv6 address just to that process. And you, 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 start, you start the Apache server, the, the web server, and you assign the address just to that process. What does this mean? That if I'm trying to get to your content, I'm not anymore addressing the address and the port 80 or 443 for HTTPS. No, I don't need port anymore because if I want to get your content, the only thing that is running on that IP address is, a, is the web server. 
So I address the address, the IPv6 address, and, and what, whatever request comes to this address, it's just one, one uh, uh, server, just one process to, to respond, and I get back the content. So that means that we start differentiating services, services based on IP address, not anymore on ports. This means that security policy, now we are doing on layer three and layer four, right? That means that we can lower the, 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 the security policy to layer three. We can do layer three in hardware easily. Not every equipment supports doing layer four in hardware because it costs, right? Doing the filtering for, for, for layer four, it's, it's much more expensive than, than, than filtering simple filters on, on layer three. And that's how we, we can simplify many, many, many things, right? Um, you know, this is just, just an idea that actually some, some people is already working on, on and I, I think it's cool. I think it will completely change the, the, the paradigm of networking that uh, we, have, we have been used to. And there are also some other other crazy ideas what you can do with IPv6. I, th I think that in that line of the, it's not just about the internet like it is now. This is an internet that is coming. It's, there are new things coming that need a, a IPv4 is not enough. It's just not enough. Um, as examples of things that are already uh, standardized and, and uh, being developed out there with uh, commercial products, we can think about uh, wireless sensor networks and we can think about home nets. Uh, wireless sensor networks uh, are, has a protocol called six low pan that only supports IPv6. And you can have thousands of, of uh, sensors measuring and sending information between them. You can create a mesh of sensors and you can use it for uh, measuring your uh, temperature on data center or um, the, <coughs> the moisture of the soil in a vineyard. Um, there are products out there and you're not able to do that with IPv4. That's it. And um, also home nets, the idea is that the, 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 the end user uh, network is not as simple as just one LAN and Wi-Fi, but could have uh, routers behind the routers that automatically connect and uh, request a prefix and everything should happen automatically. And you get a complex network inside uh, your home, your car, your uh, set of box, different things in there. And uh, the only way of um, making that possible is using this new protocol. So it's something that, okay, you can stand where you are, but you are not being ready for these future services because at the end, if you do things right, uh, users, uh, the APC should be transparent for the end user. They only want to access services. So you can sell new services and get money with that if you use IPv6 and you think uh, forward. That's the main idea. I wanted to ask you a question. We have discussed about these sports last evening, and uh, I want to ask you this. In my company, I don't want my workers, my employees, to be able to connect to SMTP outside of my company. How could I filter that if I don't have ports? So if you're, if you're running your own company, you, usually the enterprises are um, running firewalls that are doing layer 7 packet inspection. Let's face it. That's 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 what it's it is. It's too expensive for me. I just want to filter ports. It's much easier, and they, I I know how to do it. It's simple. Everybody knows how to filter ports. I don't want to do packet well, inspection. I assume this would be like a, this is this would be like a configurable option on the host. Yeah. So you can allow to do this, use an IP instead of a port, or not allow to do this from your company policy. From no, no. If the outside SMTP server doesn't use a port. Yeah. then I don't know that my employee would connect directly to an SMTP okay, so server. Why would you want to... I don't to want him to connect directly SMTP. because they, maybe they, their computer In, gets look, infected. And internet they send, uh, internet is the data. network where people communicate. Why, why yes, would you do that? All the companies do all kind of filtering, all kind of fire for different so, reasons. Ciprian, what, what Ian was saying is that uh, you can do that. You can put... Uh, bind server on an IPv6, a mail server on IPv6, you can get rid of the ports. Okay, I agree with you. Then my but in time, will in time the, 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 the mail server that you want to filter or the traffic, it will change, it will adapt. You will be able to query the host the mail is going to and just drop that IP. It will change. It's not going to stay the same. We are now blocked in the mentality of IPv4 and ports and stuff like that. 
it will adapt, it will change, we will find new ways of blocking the traffic. Exactly. And so, I'm glad you mentioned the change in mentality. Uh, Can my I just add one, one more thing? Just sure, yeah. An analogy, we are now trapped in, in this V4 mentality, so the analogy for me is like, like um, um, you know, when they build the first car, first car run on coal. They, they put the coal in and, and, and put the fire and it was a steam engine and they were running around with these steam cars. And then somebody came to the idea to switch to gas and diesel. And then these people that were using coal and steam was sort of like, eh, this will never work, right? We will, we will not switch because we have enough coal. In, 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 and we, we will be able to run our cars and now we are switching in, to electric. infinitely, infinitely, right? If people would not think about the, the future and, and go through the pain of changing the car from the steam engine into, into, into the, the combustion engine, into the diesel or gas, we would still all be running the, the, the steam cars. Would that be of any good to us or...? No. Thank you for that analogy. But I just in have Germany, just a second. In <laughs> Germany, they still use DSL connections of 10 megabits per second. So they are still using steam engines. We have here the average uh, connection of over 100 megabits per second in Romania. So uh, they were not able to change the mentality to move the hardware from something that was implemented 20 years ago to what we have today in Romania. I and have you a, think they are going to move? I have a neighbor at home that, that has the, let's, the let's, steam let's engine leave it, at home. Let's leave it at that and I'll ask the final question uh, because there was like, it's related to this. We've heard arguments that with IPv6 deployment could lead, lead to less security on the internet or more problems on the internet because it provides an opportunity to bring a large number of insecure IoT, Internet of Things devices on the internet. And I know, Alvaro, you, you touched on this, uh, the rise of IoTs in your talk, so maybe you can address this, uh, this issue. Uh, yeah. Um there is a big concern when, when people start uh, learning about IPv6 because there is a big uh, threat of the unknown, but when they start uh, learning about IPv6, uh, you realize that you have to change your mindset. You, you can have IPv4 mindset or IPv6 mindset for specific issues that at the beginning takes time. It's what they have already said about the learning curve. You need to, to play with technology to learn that things. Uh, Two main uh, examples could be addressing. Um, you will see that you will have the feeling that you are wasting addresses with IPv6, but you, for sure you need uh, to, to, to do the math and you will see you have more than enough addresses. If you go back into the bit, you will see you have that huge amount of addresses that you can even, it's, it's not, uh, you can imagine how much you have. So you don't have to be aware uh, of using addresses. And the other one is the security. Everybody um, with a P4 mindset associates the public addresses with being exposed to the internet. And in IPv6, you use I public global IPv6 addresses, but having a global addressing doesn't mean you have global reachability. It's not mandatory to have an IPv6 address, address, and that address is reachable from the whole internet. You are the network manager, you are the security officer, you have to, to decide who is going to connect to, to which device. So it's just a change of the mindset, taking that into account. And when you design your network, you have to be aware of that. And it's not more or less secure, but it's a different scenario. And you have to do things a little bit different. That's all. It's, it's, that's my point of view. And on that note, uh, because we, we are out of time, I'd like to thank our guests for, for joining us for this. I, I, Hope that you found it informative and you enjoyed it. And if you have any other questions for our guests, I'm sure they'll be around and you can ask them outside. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lucien, and uh, everybody, uh, all the panelists. Um, I would like to add, actually, that Lucien preferred to do this rather than go on honeymoon. So. Uh, he, he's really, I hope his wife is very forgiving. But, uh, <laughs>